herd hierarchy. Time is now. Let's go. The top 10 NFL teams according to college. Number 10. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk Cousins is Dak Prescott. You'll be relevant, good, and you can win your division. Listen, their offensive weapons, I think, were underused last year. Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bajon Robinson. They have a top five or six offensive line, according to PFF. I think Raheem Morris is the rare defensive coach who understands offense. The bottom line is Kirk Cousins picked a great division like Tom Brady did. He went to Tampa. It was a bad division, and he had a good offensive line. That's what Kirk Cousins has joined. I think they can win 12 games. I don't think they'd win 12 games in the NFC North, but in the NFC South, I think they can run away with it. Best online, best quarterback, arguably, in the division, Atlanta at 10. Number nine. I think. Wow. Okay. So I just want to focus on the Falcons for this one. I feel that it's easier to focus uh, not on the top 10 as a whole and just individually because there's just too many teams to discuss in a, you know, in a quick segment in the style that at least that I do it. The fact that the Falcons are top 10 you should not surprise anyone who watches The Herd, who listens to me, um, maybe some of the shows like NFL Live and stuff. I really think that the, the main people that have the Falcons on the lower end are going to be, at this point, are going to be more of a fringe like i mean i think the falcons are a for real team i mean like they they really are just for ex- for the exact reasons how colin outlined them kirk cousins is going to be such a massive upgrade for the atlanta falcons that i just think that they're going to be able to hit the ground running so quickly too i really really do kirk cousins this is this is not new to, to cousins at all um yes there are some new pieces that everything that, you know, and, and coaches that and it all needs to be integrated. But this isn't a situation where you're having a rookie quarterback having to kind of not only learn a new system, but learn what the heck the NFL is as a whole and what it's like, you know, and, and all the ups and downs of that. And, you know, everyone's so quick to bury Kirk Cousins because of his injury and they're like oh you know he's a 35 year old 36 year old quarterback who's coming back from an achilles injury there is all reason to believe that at least for professional athletes the achilles injury is no longer a death sentence it's just not and 36 is not 46 so i i understand why people are hesitant but whether Kirk Cousins is the quarterback or even Penix, like they are going to be able to play. I agree. Those offensive weapons were greatly underutilized because they didn't have enough. They didn't have the quarterback that can tie it all together. I mean, I mean, they 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 had nothing going on offensively, nothing. And Kirk Cousins is going to be able to change that instantly. Kirk Cousins doesn't need to be a top 10 quarterback to make the Falcons a top 10 team. That's the difference. It's it's that simple. He does not need to be a top 10 quarterback to make the Falcons a top 10 team. And if he is a top 10 quarterback, that team could potentially be a top five team. And again, you know, like Colin said at the top, like, I don't know. These things are going to change. We're going to get a feel for how this all unfolds, of course. Because, you know, these predictions are always brutal before we've even seen them play a game, but it's so fun to do. And so, yeah, I really wholeheartedly, I think the Falcons are for real. I think the Falcons are going to be um, surprise a lot of fans. The media seems to have a better idea. This is one of those rare occasions where it feels like the media has a better understanding of who the Falcons are to me. And it's the fans that are like, no way. Because the fans generally don't believe in Kirk Cousins and they don't believe in the Falcons because they didn't watch a lot of Falcons games because the Falcons haven't really been relevant for the last few years. So I understand it. I understand why the casual fan, and I don't mean casual negative, but just the average Joe fan who's watching some Thursday night games, some Sunday night games, Monday. I could understand that, that they're like, they see the Falcons and they're like, meh, who are the Falcons? Who's their quarterback? What's that guy's name? Who's their coach? They just don't know. So they don't know that, that team was kind of sitting pretty with a legit roster or, you know, a decent enough roster that when they get a competent enough quarterback, it's on. And those same fans, though, don't believe in Kirk Cousins because he played for the Commanders and the Minnesota Vikings. 
this is going to be a, such a fascinating storyline to see unfold because I think we're going to see very fast success. To me, there's only two ways how this really doesn't end up being successful. And as much as I believe in Penix, I think it's going to be easier for Kirk Cousins. So one, if Kirk Cousins really ends up being a disaster and now he brings the team down because he's kind of good, not good enough. He's injured, but not fully healthy. Like, you know, it's just one of those weird, like in-between situations where it's like, do they move on from him? Do they not? Do they bench him? Do they not? What do they do? One of those weird wonky situations, which I don't think will happen. Or the coaching is an absolute disaster. No idea how to run a team. No idea how to delegate. And it just ends up being a complete disaster. That's the only way. And I just don't see those things happening. So that's why I definitely have the Falcons top 10 as well. But those are just my thoughts. What do you guys all think? Do you think the Atlanta Falcons are too high? Do you think they're, they should be lower? Um, let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.